friends thank you so much for uh the wait thank you so much for staying here welcome to the daily creative challenge in adobe illustrator yes i will have to do it a little bit quicker today we had some trouble with youtube but hopefully now everything will be good all right so today is really exciting today we're going to create some custom type so let's jump right into it and not waste any longer thanks everyone for joining the chat i see lamont cornell dmitri Matt, Noor, Robert, cool. Thank you so much for joining. And hopefully you guys already had the chance to grab some coffee and some cookies and open your Illustrator because we are getting started right now and we're going to take a look at our work screen and I'm going to share with you the Daily Creative Challenge page. This is where you can get all the information on the Daily Creative Challenges. It's behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. And we currently have four different challenges going, one in Premiere Pro, one in Photoshop, one in Illustrator, and one in, is in XD. So hopefully you guys can uh, profit from all of the challenges and submit those um, to our Discord channel. Here is uh, the, uh, the Discord channel link that I'm going to share with you guys. So you can head there, open the window right away, go to bit.ly slash AI Discord. This is where we all stay in touch and this is where where we all communicate and share our designs. Cool, George is saying coffee run complete. Awesome, that's perfect. All right, so today's challenge is challenge number two. I'm going to activate my uh, challenge here. And today is all about custom type. Today we're going to create a poster with a custom typeface using the direct selection tool. And the reason why I love the direct selection tool so much is that you can really go into typefaces and modify those and create some really custom uh, made logos and custom made typefaces for your clients. So this is what we're going to be doing today and we're going to use um, we're going to create a poster and my friends if you want to get started with a starter file so if you're new to Illustrator um, feel free to click get started and this is where you can download the starter file for, for our Illustrator that we're going to be working in today and of course feel free to use fonts.adobe.com as your source for typefaces and a color.adobe.com for color resources. I think those are really, really cool sites um, that you can definitely um, check out uh, to, you know, get yourself some really cool typefaces. All right, so now let's jump straight into the file. This is the starter file that I've created for you guys. As you can see, it already kind of includes the, um, a little mock-up for our poster. Here on the right side, you will see that I have created some, uh, I have put together some typefaces for you to use. Feel free to use the same ones. If you're an absolute beginner, feel free to use the exact same settings that I have here and, you know, just experiment with it and make it your own. All right, hopefully you guys are doing good here. Andrew is here, cool, um, awesome. So today, uh, by the way, I'm also using a background from unsplash.com, which is a really great site for free uh, image resources. Of course, feel free to always um, give, give the credit to, um, to the artist or to the photographer of the, uh, of the artwork. And this one is Wesley Tinji. Thank you so much, Wesley, for providing us this free image for our background. Awesome, guys. So here, as you can see, we already have um, kind of a, like a background going on and I'm going to lock it with command and two. And I also have an overlay, which is this paper texture here. And you can unlock it with option command and two and you can feel free to move it around. Also, the background is locked. So to lock things, you click command and two. So this is what we want to do so it doesn't get in our way today because we want to create some custom type and in yesterday's challenge i have created a logo and some of you have done an amazing job i have seen it on the discord channel you guys were so so amazing i had such a proud mom moment you know when uh, a mom teaches their child something and they uh do an excellent job in in uh you know creating something amazing out of that so um christelle is saying beautiful background yeah i love that image as well i think it works super well with the poster it almost looks quite realistic so let's get started and this is just a placeholder I'm going to remove that so we can start from scratch and so basically these two weeks for us are going to be to create a, a branding a whole branding project um, including packaging including mock-ups including the logo of course and so today we are going to be working on this um, poster what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the logo from my last challenge yesterday, but if you want to start from scratch, you can just 
copy paste one of these text so let's say I'm holding the option key and I'm copy pasting my little um, the little text here and I'm going to make it black so here we have the fill color and we're going to change it to black okay and I'm going to write my brand name yesterday I already started working on my branding and you guys came up with a name glam up it's a cosmetics brand so um, I'm just going to glam up I use my glam up logo which is basically just a typeface right so what we want to do now is, now that I have typed something in my text box here, I can um, uh, click Command Shift and O and outline my logo, right? So this is what I want to work with today. So now we can go into detail here and we can double click and select each, each letter by itself individually. If you cannot uh, select a single letter, that means that the letters are grouped. To ungroup the letters, you, you simply click Command Shift, um, um, Command Shift and G so that now we have all the letters by themselves and they're not um, you know, performing as a group anymore. But if you want to group them back, you click, com uh, you click Command and G. So now um, they're grouped and now they're acting as a group. But to, um, to be able to access our um, our typeface, we want to use it as a vector and we want to use a single letter so we don't want to have it as a group. All right, now I'm going to decrease, uh, increase the size just a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to have to select all the letters again. Of course, I ungrouped them a little bit too early, but that's, that's okay. Now I'm going to group them again and I'm going to hold um, Option, shift, and click and drag it to the side so that my uh, logo resizes to all the directions. So this is what I want to do. I want to increase the size because I want the logo to be visible from afar. Now if I zoom out, I can definitely recognize the logo. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and modify the typeface. So here we can go into the single letters and we can go into our direct selection tool, which is right under our regular selection tool. So the direct selection tool allows you guys to select points that are part of the vector. And what we are going to do is we are going to move the, um, the bottom part of the P just a little bit to the bottom, just like so, to kind of create a graphical element here. So now you can see I have modified my P um, to the bottom and the same thing I'm going to do with the L. This is just something random that I'm coming up with, but um, you guys feel free to experiment with your letters, with your logo, and feel free to uh, modify it the way you want it. So what I want to do is again, I want to select the two points from my L and I want to hold, um, I want to drag them along with the holding the line. So I'm holding shift and I'm holding this um, kind of this vector line that connects those two points. And now I'm moving them up, right? So this is what I want to do. I want to do the same thing that I did with my P. So now we have this cool action going on, you know, of the letters kind of extending. You can also go in and, uh, you know, modify the letters. You can create some cool, um, let's say um, you want to modify this uh, G here and you want to create a little curve or a little roundness. On the right side, you will find um, in the properties panel, by the way, if you don't see the, uh, the properties panel, go ahead and click on to window and activate properties. It's a really, really useful panel for you to, um, to work on specific um, tasks. So let's say I'm working here in my vector with my direct selection tool. My panel here will show me the exact things that I need to modify for this exact tool. So it's a really, really useful tool for you to use now I can go ahead as I have selected this point and now I can go ahead and, and um, transfer it to, an, um, to a smooth anchor point. So now I can go ahead and create a, a curve out of that. And this is how you can create a custom typeface for your client. Because I have kind of already set this logo, I don't want to do this, but feel free to do that for yours. Um, it's, it's super, super exciting when you can actually create, um, you know, your own lettering, your own... Um, typeface even there there are also extensions for um uh for illustrator that i have learned recently so here let's see if i can show it to you guys real quick here i have extensions and it's called font self maker this uh, uh this add-on this uh, plugin basically 
um, allows you to create your custom typefaces. And what you can do is you can base those off of existing typefaces and modify them and create an amazing, you know, uh, custom typeface with this technique of, you know, the using the direct selection tool, modifying the letters, and then you can create your own um, typeface. Cool. So now that we have kind of experimented with this, we can also go do something crazy here. We can also go ahead and create a little curve right here. Um, so, you know, just feel free to experiment and do something cool with your, uh, with your logo and feel free to go and, you know, change the things. You can even go in here into the A. Um, I'm going to select, um, the inside part of the A and you can even go ahead and just like holding shift, I'm going to turn it around the other way. And now we have a completely different letter, right? So if you can even go in and, uh, modify it, you know, to a... To completely different a so this is super super exciting to play with and i'm excited to see what you guys will come up with so right now what i want to do is i'm going to just increase the size and i'm going to make it um since i don't have a lot of time but you feel free to use uh, the little um type around the path tool and create little circles uh with with the same technique that we learned yesterday from our badge logo. So feel free to use that as well. This is basically what I did here. I can also just command and C, just copy paste it into my new artwork so that I have that used as well, just like so. And I'm going to remove these old designs that are not relevant for me anymore. And I'm going to paste in my new custom work. So now I have my little badge thing going on and I can make it black of course so that it fits to the overall design and now I can copy paste this to the other circles just to make it really really quick for you guys just like so and of course feel free to um, to change the color of the circles for that all you have to do is double click into the mask that the circles are masked with and select all the circles and then you can go into the color uh, palette here and fill them with a completely different color just the way you want it so um, each brand of course has completely different um, color palettes so I would like to encourage you guys to create yourself a color palette for your branding and for that I recommend you using one very light uh, color so for me it will be like a, almost like a ba uh, like a light light gray uh, almost like an off-white and for the dark color I'm using this um, very dark charcoal gray so I'm going to use my eyedropper tool um, the key, uh, the shortcut for that is the I, and I'm going to make my Glam Up logo just the exact same color. All right, now let's finish this up just a little bit. I'm going to go back into the P and extend my um, extend my P up to the end of my poster. So again, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I'm selecting these two points, holding Shift. I'm adding the other one, and I'm clicking on the line, and I'm kind of dragging it to the bottom. Now you can see that if I don't hold shift, it kind of can go to the sides. But if I hold shift, it, straight, it stays in a straight line in the 90 degree angle. And the same thing you can do horizontally and vertically as well. So I did that and the same thing I want to do with my L. So I'm gonna go in as well with my direct selection tool and I'm going to pull it in up to the top side of my poster holding shift. So now, what do we notice? We notice that uh, our circles are kind of a little bit off so um, that the typeface is not very well legible. So this is what we want to correct here. And um, now we have our text reaching out of the poster. So let's create a mask. So I'm going to use a rectangle and I'm going to mask those little circles that are reaching out with the text. So I'm creating a rectangle that's the exact poster size, right? And now I'm using the regular selection tool, holding shift, and I'm additionally selecting all the circles with the text, all the type on a path um, circles. And now I have my rectangle as well selected and I can go on the right side, click make clipping mask, or I can simply right click and make clipping mask. So now you can see all of our text is inside the poster, it's masked, and now you can, um, you know, you can present it as a mock-up because, I mean, technically it is, it is already a ready-made mock-up for you guys. All right. Now I want to 
kind of push the circle a little bit away from the text so glam up is really well legible and this is going to be my poster yesterday we had some questions on how to export this file for presentation what i want to do is i want to go on to click uh, onto file export you can either export for screens or you can ex export ads and I'm going to use the artboards because I do want to export only my artboard. I don't want to export all the all the things that are happening around it, right? And I'm going to use a JPEG file and I'm going to save it to my desktop. So I'm going to click export. And yes, RGB is perfect for us and the resolution can be either 72 points per inch or if you want to be extra high resolution, um, use the medium. And that's what I'm going to do. Awesome, guys. And now what we are going to do is we are going to post it onto our Discord channel. This is the channel where we all share our work under the hashtag challenge. And here again is the Discord link. And I'm so, so looking forward to your guys' submissions. Um, as you can see, there's already some people who submitted their work from yesterday. So I'm super, super excited um, to see your work and to see your, you kind of apply the knowledge that you've learned today. Awesome, guys. Um, Lamont is saying like a round of speed dating. Yeah, hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow for um, the daily creative challenge number three. And I'm super, super excited. And thank you so much for staying here and uh, joining me. And feel free to reach out on Instagram if you have any questions or feel free to write me a message on Discord. On Instagram, it's just like uh, my name, Julia Maselska. And I'm looking forward to see you guys' submissions and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye bye.